Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel today for our fifth episode booking All Japan Pro Wrestling here on Total Extreme Wrestling 2020. I hope you've all had a splendid day. We are here for the Raising an Army Memorial Series show headlined by two big title matches. Jake Lee attempting his first defense of the Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship against the Royal Road Tournament winner Shotaro Ashino, as well as Koji Iwamoto attempting his third defense of the World Junior Heavyweight Championship against Total Eclipse's Yusuke Kodama. So a big night here for Total Eclipse with Jake Lee defending the Triple Crown in the main event, and Yusuke Kodama challenging for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. All in all, I think we have a pretty strong card here. It's also the last show before we head into the Real World Tag League throughout November and December. I might finally look at bringing in some foreigners for that tournament, but that is yet to be determined. Speaking of which, in between shows, Apollo Crews entered contract renegotiations with the WWE. I did make an attempt to sign him. We had an offer for four years, just under $25,000 a month, while WWE's offer was only a two-year deal worth about $33,000 per month. He was seriously considering both offers, but ended up re-signing with WWE, so there's a glimpse into what could have been. I don't really want to sign every single WWE wrestler whose contract comes up, but in the case of Apollo, I think he is someone who has been largely underutilized throughout his WWE tenure. Obviously this year he started to get more of a spotlight and I thought given his prior ties to Dragon Gate in Japan perhaps trying to bring him back wouldn't be the most unrealistic thing in the world but that is in another life not in this one and in this one we have the Raising an Army Memorial Series show to book so let's get into it. In our opening match of the night I brought in veteran junior heavyweight wrestler Koji Kanemoto for a one-off appearance to go against Ryuki Honda and Kanemoto is victorious in 10 minutes and 28 seconds by pinfall with a tiger suplex. Kanemoto had a 38 despite his advanced age so he could be someone that we look to bring in more regularly as a veteran presence in the junior heavyweight scene. Honda had a 33 as he continues to develop and the match overall got a 35. Once again we see the penalty for the match being too short which makes absolutely no sense but I'm not going to get into that in today's episode. Moving on to our second match of the night, unfortunately Alejandro picked up the exact same shoulder injury that Fuminari Abe has been dealing with for the last few months while working elsewhere between shows. So you'll immediately notice Alejandro is down to a 32 rated performance. Obviously he is capable of better, but we're just going to have to stick it out for these next few months while his shoulder is hurt. Fuminari Abe on the other hand, I believe he should be healed after this show, if not very soon. So that'll be very good to see. But it was Yuka Miyamoto who picked up the victory in this match. He pinned Black Mansuri after 10 minutes and 3 seconds. As the Yankee Giants pick up a, another victory against two of All Japan's junior heavyweights. Then moving into our third match of the evening. In a 51 rated match, Akira Francisco and Takao Omori defeat Hokoto Omori and Kuma Arashi in 10 minutes and 17 seconds when Akira pinned Hokoto Omori. Unfortunately, this match was penalized due to the fact that Hokoto Omori and Kuma Arashi have no chemistry as partners, so I'll have to make a mental note of that. Akira Francesco, who I've talked time and time again about being one of the revelations of this save, he had a 58. Takao Omori had a 34. Kuma Arashi with the bad chemistry had a 41 and Hokoto Omori also penalized by the bad chemistry with a 34 matching Takao Omori. Obviously I know those two are capable of more but I guess this was just one of those nights and we know not to put these two together in future tag team matches. Then moving on to the fourth bout of the evening in a 48 rated match Koji Doi and Tajiri defeat Atsuki Oyagi and Yuma Oyagi in 9 minutes and 56 seconds when Koji Doi pinned Atsuki Oyagi with a spine buster. Hey, I'm actually allowed to say that finisher out loud. Yuma Oyagi had a 52, Atsuki Oyagi had a 45, Koji Doi had a 48, and Tajiri, who was really off his game, not really off his game, I shouldn't be so harsh, he just seemed off his game, he had a 38. A good win here for Total Eclipse, and you have to imagine that Koji Doi and Kuma Arashi will be entering the Real World Tag League together next month. I don't want to say the match ratings have been a little disappointing so far, but I think we're really yet to hit our stride. Hopefully that can change with this next match, because in a huge upset, Rising Hayato pins Shuji Ishikawa with a surprise cradle. But perhaps that isn't even the biggest news of the match, because if you look at the penalties, a certain Kento Miyahara is no longer being penalized for being in poor form and his performance has skyrocketed to an 84. 
incredible stuff. So yes, Kento Miyahara and Rising Hayato defeat the Twin Towers of Kohei Sato and Shuji Ishikawa when Rising Hayato surprised Shuji Ishikawa with a cradle for the victory. Rising Hayato got a 38, Shuji Ishikawa had a 65, Kohei Sato had a 57. And after falling up short against Koji Iromoto for the World Junior Heavyweight Championship last month, it looks like Rising Hayato is not okay with just sitting on his hands and he has just staked a claim for Shuji Ishikawa's Geora TV Championship. But of course, Kohei Sato and Shuji Ishikawa will be competing in the Real World Tag League set first, so if that title match does come to fruition, it won't be until the conclusion of the tournament in December assuming the Twin Towers aren't in the tournament final. Then next, we have a six-man tag team match pitting Evolution against Purple Haze, which gets a 59, as Dan Tamora, Hikaru Sato, and Suwama defeat Izanagi, Shakira, Iri, and Zeus in 14 minutes and 37 seconds when Hikaru Sato submitted Izanagi. Suwama had a 63, Hikaru Sato had a 57, Dan Tamora had a 35, Izanagi matched him with a 35, Zeus, the best in the match, had a 66, and Iri had a 58. Unfortunately, Suwama was off his game, which is why he got a little bit lower than he usually does at a 63, although we've seen worse in his Royal Road Tournament semi-final against Takeshi Sugiura. I think he was down in the low 50s, so getting a 63 is not a catastrophe, and I still think getting a 59 is a good rating for the match. Then next, we have our first title match of the evening, as Koji Iwamoto attempts his third defense of the World Junior Heavyweight Championship against Total Eclipse's Yusuke Kodama, and he is successful in making that third defense. After 20 minutes and 6 seconds by pinfall with a Hurricane Driver, a 64 rated match, the best match of Iwamoto's reign as he seems to really be hitting his stride now. Iwamoto had a 58, Yusuke Kodama, who I am a massive fan of, he certainly delivered in the spot getting a 54. I'm very pleased with this result, a 64. A great rating for our Junior Heavyweight Championship, and a very encouraging sign for the reign of Koji Iwamoto. Then afterwards, we have an angle where he calls Hikaru Sato to the ring, and Koji Iwamoto says he wants to earn his spot in Evolution, the same way that Shotaro Ashino did by defeating Suwama in the final of the Royal Road Tournament, and he nominates Hikaru Sato as his next challenger for the World Junior Heavyweight Championship, which Sato accepts. So that'll happen in December at our final Real World Tag League show, Koji Iwamoto attempts his fourth defense of the World Junior Heavyweight Championship against Hikaru Sato, and if Iwamoto is victorious, not only will he defend his title, but he will also earn his way into Evolution. Of course, the lesser talked about side of the formation of Total Eclipse earlier this year is that Jake Lee portrayed Koji Iwamoto in Jin, and Iwamoto has been an informal partner of Evolution ever since then, very similar to Ashino, never formally inducted, but now he has the chance to do so. Up next is our main event, it's the Royal Road Tournament winner Shotaro Ashino, challenging Jake Lee for the Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship in what will be Jake Lee's first defense of the title. Of course, Ashino has a huge bone to pick with Jake Lee, given the hijacking of his own stable. Jake Lee effectively hijacked and funds to replace from Shotaro Ashino to form Total Eclipse. Ashino is also out to prove that he is capable of winning the Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship, having unsuccessfully challenged Suwama twice. And on the other hand, Jake Lee is out to prove that winning the Triple Crown from Suwama wasn't a fluke. He's a worthy champion and he is a true main event talent in all Japan. I've got really high hopes for this match. I hope it can get into the 70s, the rating, and the result is... Oh my goodness. In a 78 rated match, shattering my expectations, Jake Lee makes his first defense of the Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship against Shotaro Ashino in 29 minutes and 43 seconds by pinfall with a backdrop suplex. I am elated. Jake Lee had a 73, Shotaro Ashino had a 67. I had big concerns going into this match after Ashino put in a very poor performance at the Royal Road Tournament Final, but he has completely redeemed himself here. What a performance from both men to get a 78 rated match. After Kento Miyahara versus Takeshi Sugiura got a 79 in the first round of the Royal Road Tournament, I did not think any singles match would be coming close to that rating until mid to late 2022 at the earliest. Yet here we are, one month later, two guys that I have put big faith into they have more than delivered. I said, you know, just minutes ago before the match that I hoped, I hoped it would get into the 70s. And here we are, a 78. 
What a fantastic way to end the Raising an Army Memorial Series show and to close the show properly Jake Lee cuts a promo with the rest of Total Eclipse. Much like when he won the title, this segment absolutely bombs, but it's okay, we know it won't affect the show rating too much, and we get a 73. What a home run. One interesting note from this as well is that Shotaro Ashino was a bit unhappy about putting over Jake Lee, so I'm hoping it won't give him too many morale issues. It said he was only a little bit unhappy, so I'm hoping that with a few post-show speeches, we might be able to remedy that. So for our speech, we will praise Kento Miyahara for getting an 84, which was just ridiculous. It's so good that he's finally out of his slump and it could not come at a better time going into the real world tag league tournament. And then of course, who else are we gonna praise other than Jake Lee and Shotaro Ashino for that fantastic Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship match? We make our speech and Kento Miyahara was very happy. Jake Lee was happy, and so Shotaro Ashino seemed pleased. So if we look at the feedback for the show, fans felt that it was awesome. You've heard me say it before, but that's always a good thing to see. And if we head over to our top 100, 73 rated show, so that's our second highest rated show ever. And of course, that brilliant main event is also our new second highest rated match ever. So up next, we have the Real World Tag League Tournament. And I think, almost out of necessity, I will bring in a few foreigners. I feel like we've advanced far enough into this save. By the time the tournament starts, it'll be November, that it wouldn't be totally unrealistic to bring in some foreign talent. And if we look at our roster quickly, I don't know if I've ever showed this on camera. So this is a look at our total roster for anyone who is curious enough, but we don't really have enough heavyweight tag teams as it is to fill out an entire tournament. In my opinion, we have Kento Miyahara and Yuma Oyagi, we have Kohei Sato and Shuji Ishikawa, we have Koji Doi and Kuma Arashi, and we also have Shakira Iri and Zeus, but those are really the only four defined heavyweight tag teams in my opinion. Of course we have other heavyweights on the roster, and we could make a few more teams, but I think if we're going to have a round robin tournament of about eight teams, that's the number that I have in my head. We already have four on the roster, we can make one or two more with other guys we have on the roster. So if we do bring in any foreigners, it really only will be one team or two at absolute most, but any suggestions please do feel free to leave them in the comments. Until then, however, that's going to be it from me for this episode. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe with the bell icon tick so you don't miss any future content of mine. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.